Hi, my name is Richard Wilk. I'm a professor of anthropology at Indiana University here in the USA. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my um, article called Global Junk. Um, who is to blame for the obesity epidemic? I argue in this article that uh, junk food is everywhere around us. And so is the dietary transition. And by the dietary transition, we mean a movement from a diet based on locally produced healthy foods to one which is obesogenic, meaning one that is likely to cause people to gain weight and become obese, and therefore to promote diseases associated with obesity like high blood pressure and especially diabetes. In this short article, I talk about my own experience working in Belize, where I started doing research in the uh, early 1970s. And at the time I was living in Mayan villages there, I don't think I ever saw a fat person or even someone who was plump. Everyone worked, they worked hard, and they ate a diet that was firmly based on uh, corn and other locally produced vegetables um, with moderate amounts of game meat and uh, fish. When I went back to some of the same villages um, about five years ago with a team of students, I was really shocked to see the change. Um, almost 40% of the population is now um, obese according to medical criteria and the incidence of diabetes has gone up above 25%, higher for um, older women. So the question I ask in this paper is, how did this happen and who's to blame? It's really easy to blame the victims and say that they're just looking for convenience and making bad food choices and we need to educate them to make better choices. It's also easy to blame corporations, which are doing what corporations are designed to do, which is to make money selling products. Um, and in this case, they create a market by producing extremely inexpensive foods, um, which taste good um, and are full of high levels of salt, sugar, and fat, all of which are cheap ingredients. And many food companies have now targeted um, poorer people in developing countries as a potentially huge market. It's also easy to blame governments and think that they could solve the problem by just regulating food the same way that they regulate alcohol and tobacco. But regulating food is a much more difficult project um, and it faces opposition both from very wealthy and influential corporations and also from a populace that would like to be able to consume cold soft drinks at the end of a hot day. Instead, I think it's time for us to take a look at the broader economy, at the idea that um, people are better off moving to cities um, and that we're better off in general turning the countryside from a mosaic of little tiny small farms into a kind of factory in the field producing um, plantation crops like bananas and oil palms and soybeans um, and um, doing this without thinking about its effect on people and its effect on their bodies and on their health. We have to question a market system which leaves poor people with so few options of things to eat um, and uh, which does not serve them um, in ways that make it possible for them to buy healthy food. We need to look at the way that governments subsidize and cheapen and encourage the production of plantation crops and unhealthy food 
and think about shifting our educational system from one that moves people from the countryside into the city where they have trouble finding jobs. And we have to think about um, a, a land tenure system that makes it easier for poor people to get and to hold on to uh, the land that they need to produce good, local, healthy food for them and their families. Mm -hmm.